have your gene sealers and uh, something something Tyranids. We're throwing chairs at Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 2, brought to you by Relic Entertainment slash Feral on the Essence Engine 2.0, the same nightmare field that brought you Company of Heroes 2, oh that you can pick up for about $20 if you just want the base game, 60 bucks for some DLC, and 80 bucks for the Turbo Cock Smashing Fuck You Edition. What is it? With a focus on facts, fast action RTS gameplay, Dawn of War 2 brings to life the science fiction universe of Warhammer 40,000 like never before. Experience the intimate brutality of battle as you play through your chosen race's epic campaign. That's totally racist, you guys. Uh, total disclosure, Feral did send us keys for this. So let's kick this off like so many chain swords to the face. Let's. Uh, one chair means that's garbage. Two chairs means that's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that's awesome. We also got our categories of doom. Makes with the working. Shiny sounds, controls, and for the emperor! So let's kick this off. Uh, Ven did Warhammer 40k. Make with the working. Over here on the unsupported Ubuntu 1404 LTS. A uh, box of business with an 8150, 980 for the video, and UHD displayed. Um, it ran. I mean, I didn't have any issues with it running, but... There's a couple of things. There are, there are a couple of things. Um, when you do play on an unsupported operating system, which, in all fairness, we are all playing on an unsupported operating system, so keep that in mind with this chairquisition. Because, you know, let's face facts. You're not going to... It's like, oh, it requires 1604, and I have 1404, and I'm running an LTS. I'm just saying, in my case, it's like, I'm not upgrading to an LTS just to play a game. I'm sorry. But more often than not, that's your average person who's going to run into that. So we're trying to give you that side of the story. But if you are playing with an unsupported operating system, take a shot every time I say that, you get a wonderful little pop-up screen every single time you launch the f***ing game that reminds you that you're a horrible person and you need to upgrade <laughs> to the latest version of Humboon 2. But let's talk about the game um something with the sega games that they really like to do is to feed you 30 seconds of unskippable bullshit right at the beginning and this game puts a cherry on the cake by giving you a loading screen right after that um load times they're kind of authentic man you know 2009 hashtag on that business they're not horrible but on ssd from a game from 2009 you'd think it would be done and gone and rocking uh I don't know if this is a bug or a feature, but there's something I definitely noticed. I thought there was like a two-hour wait period before uh, games just started shitting out cards. This thing was just like dropping trading cards left and right on me just for starting it up. Not a problem. I've never traded a card. I don't even know where that option is because I'm old, angered, and confused. But how does it run? Well, on the 980 at 1080p, According to the benchmark, which I find the benchmark to be relatively accurate, um, my average was 45 verbs. In actual gameplay, I'm going to say, yeah, between 46 and sometimes to 60, but with this particular engine, sometimes it'll drop as low as 24, 25 for fucking old reason because nothing's going on, but it just does that. Uh, Thomas P. did point out on G+, to me that this game did transfer all of his progress from that other operating system that shall not be named yes. to the Linux version. He was very happy with that. Now, I think that's pretty good. Um, nothing really to complain about except for on my end, and I seem to be the only person on this blue marble with this issue because I've looked and then I was like, nope, it's working fine here. But I will just say for me, let me know, send us some hate mail if you've experienced this, or better yet, contact Feral and see if it... But if it's just me, I, I'm not going to dig him a chair for this, but multiplayer is just not going to work. There's a great little video I have saved of uh, Jordan and I's first attempt to get multiplayer working, and it's uh, kind of brilliant in our troubleshooting methodology. But yeah, Feral makes with the working, and this is really where you get graded. Everything else is going to be pretty much based on the game. But you lot did a solid job getting this up and running on Linux, so you're going to get three chairs deservedly. Oh, hi, unskippable five-minute cutscene on first launch. Rohit actually brought this up in chat realm because he just started up the game. Uh, that's cutscene. Yeah, that cutscene. Cutscene is not skippable okay, the first time a, you launch the game. Thanks, suggest. But, <laughs> yep. Um, but uh, after you've started up the game once, you can skip that by mashing the escape button. Uh, it's 
pulling 60 FPS at UHD according to the benchmark, which is not bad for a seven-year-old game on the i7-6700K with the Fedora 24s and the GTX 980 graphics and some solid-state drive. I have so many in this computer that I lose track of which one's installed on what. Um, uh, yeah, first world problems. What happened to you, man? You used to have all the HDDs. You used to be cool, man. You changed. But uh, yeah. Um, I was playing it on UHD for the most part. I uh, did not see a dip below 55 on UHD during gameplay, which is pretty good. I was playing it on uh, 1080 on the stream. You can see in the top little corner, I'm averaging mostly 60 plus minus one or two FPS. And this would be sync off, so I found that a little weird. Beyond that, on my unsupported operating system, everything worked fine, including multiplayer. I played a bit with empty. Uh, I wanted to stream some today, but Pedro had a headache. So this is, aside from that, four chairs. Still who, very much. Uh, wow. Yeah, no. Wow. Everything on Turbo with anti-aliasing on, and the frames will occasionally dip to the 20s. Uh, if I cut AA off, the lowest dip I'll see in-game proper is like 42. Um, with all that in mind, this uh, box is running uh, an AMD FX 8370E overclocked at 4.2 gigahertz and a GTX 1080 on Ubuntu 16.04. Oh. Ubuntu Mate 1604. Sorry, Mark. That said, I did run it on the uh, cheapo laptop, which is running Solus 1.2. With everything on low, it has an Intel i3 4005U. And with everything on low, it averaged about 41 FERPs on the benchmark. That's... Well, I would say is it's impressive, but Feral do really love their Intel CPUs on accounts of them previously being a Mac porting house. So for me, it gets three chairs. Well, that's three chairs for mix with working. Up next is Shiny and Sound. Ven, did the blood look like it's suitable for the blood god? Well, I mean, it's certainly no slain, but apparently you do have to enter some type of age verification for this game, which I don't fucking get. Maybe that was a thing back in 2009, but speaking of 2009... It kind of looks and sounds like a game from 2009. Uh, not that it's ugly. No, nay. Uh, but really, don't don't expect anything that you haven't seen before, boys and girls. And that said, for a strategy game of that era, it still looks a bit of all right. I mean, nothing genuinely to complain about. Okay, if you're going to get really into it, the shadows suck. They're just bad. <laughs> they're, they're just pixelated. And you're like, what? Really? Because everything else looks, you know, really nice. Even in 2016, but the shadows are just like blocky messes. That's a thing. That's not a bug. That's a feature, apparently. Um, but we want to talk about the sounds. Okay. We, we got to talk about the sounds. We got to talk about Osiris. We got to talk about live streaming it. Because yesterday, Jordan and I, Jordan was playing. I was offering um, my witty whatever banter comment. You know. Parte. Yeah, it was definitely that. We were definitely a 20-minute stretch where the game audio would cut out because of some pulse latency issues. Jordan and I never noticed, but Osiris was like, hey, the game audio cut out. And we're like, what? No. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not saying the game audio is bad. It's quite a bit all right, but that kind of shows. It is a little bit forgettable. But all in all, we're just going to keep on in threes because it looks good considering from where the game, I mean, I'm not grading it on a curve. I mean, it still looks good and it's priced to sell. I'll give it three right at. Yeah, the reason I busted up the Pulse Latency MSEC was because for a while I was getting a bit of the cracklies and that seemed to fix it. But something got rejiggered in the stream and just removing that variable from the launch options fixed that. Uh, but speaking of sounds, oh, hi, Steve Bloom. You're playing half the characters in this. <laughs> I love you as Spike Spiegel, man, but you gotta... Basically, every every port of an old game seems to have all Steve Bloom all the time. Not that there's a problem with that. He's a perfectly fine actor. Um, But as for the visual aesthetics, it looks like a AAA game from seven years ago, and it's aged pretty gracefully otherwise. The Warhammer aesthetic is there in full force. The pyramids look like Terranids. The Eldar look like Eldar. Space Marines look like Space Marines! And um, the one problem I do have, especially when you're playing Space Marines, is they all tend to look the same. If You, you, you can see this a bunch in the, stream, in the stream from yesterday where I'm cycling through my units all the time because I'm trying to figure out which one is which. 
which um, that's not really the fault of the game. Pedro will get into that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it looks good. It sounds reasonably well. You don't really play this game for the soundtrack. You play it because of Warhammer. So I'm going to give that three chairs. It's good, but it's not top of the line good. Yeah, you look at this game and you immediately go, hey, that's a 40k game. The Space Marines have their chainsaws. The Eldar have their magic and porcelain masks type things. The orcs are pretty thick in the head, and as long as you've seen Alien, you can probably design a Tyranid that is immediately recognizable. The aesthetics are completely unmistakable. The, um... This is an RTS game, and chances are you're not going to be paying too much attention to how each individual unit looks, as long as when the camera is all zoomed out the way out, and... You can tell from the silhouettes which squad, which squad is each and what to expect from the enemy squad. Eh, you did a good job. But in this game, since you're playing as the Space Marines, at least on the uh, Dawn of War 2 proper campaign, um, every squad that isn't the scouts basically looks pretty much the same. Um, but that's more a problem with the faction choice than the game's aesthetics. There, there are only so many ways in which you can make a monster of a man in power armor look different from the other monster of a man in power armor standing right next to it. You kind of have to look at their crotch region in order to figure out which weapon they're using. Oh, do they have a pistol and a chainsword? Okay, that's your hero. Do they have like a minigun? Oh, okay, the, those are the heavy squad. All right, okay, cool. So, I mean, for me... For someone who isn't really into Warhammer and 40k all that much, I can give it four chairs. All right. Well, that's three chairs for Shiny and Sounds. Up next is Control. Now, as, as you, Ben, the Immortal God Emperor, how did you feel manipulating your minions? Well, I wanted to throw a chair, but I'm sitting on a bowl. So I went and bought a chair and threw it. Uh, throw balls. No, I, I, I think uh, maybe I'm speaking only for me, which is probably appropriate. Uh, I was like, okay, it's a Sega title, which Jordan will probably elaborate on. But, you know, it's like, okay, uh, real-time strategy. Okay, WASD. Oh, right, Sega. Arrow keys. Nope, that feels dirty and wrong. Let's rebind the controls. And this game's like, peace among worlds, bitches. No rebindable controls. You get to learn. Because sometimes, you know, a Q button does something and an E button does something. And sometimes the M button does something, which is really handy when you're always trying to navigate with the dribble. I hated that. I loathe that. It is probably the single biggest detriment to the game. And another thing, I'm just going to throw this in there. Maybe I should have thrown this in with made it with a working. If you want to change the screen resolution, you got to do it with a feral pop-up button, which Jordan was kind enough to tell me. I believe it would you hold down alt. Uh, control. 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 Then click play if you've disabled that screen from Feral, which is a good screen when you need it because you're going to need it for this game if you have, you know, like us, UHD monitors. Sometimes you want to play it at 3840 by 2160. Sometimes you want to play it at 1080p. Yeah, you got to do that. But the controls technically work. Unfortunately, I was forced to, you know, up, down, left, right, and movement with the gerbil. Not a fan of doing that, but I'm learning. I'm getting better. And I'm going to continue playing this game because, hey, man, Warhammer, Linux, it's definitely a thing. So, mm, I'll give it two because the controls technically work, but they technically piss me off. Yeah, this is the company uh, Heroes 2 Pathfinding issue where some of my squad directions seem like a little... So, so they seem like suggestions. Uh, the pathfinding is a little off, so I'll say, go here. No, I'm going to take this long-ass security route through all this concentrated enemy fire. Oh, wait, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I I did good, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, dear God, someone please tell Sega to start using WASD for camera movement and RTSs as opposed to the arrow keys because I'm using my mouse to micromanage shit, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, one one other issue I have is StarCraft did this right where all the hotkeys for all the buildings and the units are the same. They do different things, but they're in that same region as opposed to this where uh, it's a bit of a crapshoot as to what does what. Um, and it has the starbound problem. If you're playing this at UHD, uh, the UI gets itty bitty, and you gotta squint. And by the time you read what an ability does, you get killed to death. Where's my Beyond mouse? that, it's 
Yeah, you, you again. You you can you can see me complaining about that on this. Not actually, no, we didn't have that issue on the stream. Um, but it's your otherwise it's your standard RTS fair. Um, but all those issues combine to a two chair score. They work, but Sega, get your shit together. Seriously, yeah, it's hard to cock up controls in an RTS, especially on PC when you have like a mouse you know, that you can use to control your units. That's where the RTS genre is comfortable. Somehow Relic managed to cock that up. How? I don't know. But uh, like Jordan mentioned, you're not really giving orders to the squads. You're giving out suggestions. Oh, you go there, pretty please. No, no, we're not going to. Because when you click to move a squad into cover, you expect them to land where the little green and yellow dots are in the little game world thingy, like any sane person would. Yet for some reason, sometimes that squad will outright ignore a cover and will walk around it and stand there gormlessly shooting at the enemy. I mean, chances are you're probably going to come out of it alive, but... Barely, and you're probably going to lose a unit or two. Uh, you'd think that if you were putting out an RTS on PC, you'd want at least your controls to be reliable. I'm okay with the keyboard bindings, if for nothing else than just to hear both Ven and Jordan complain that they can't use what uh, they, they can actually they can't use uh, WASD Speak. to move the camera. When I am usually the one complaining that you can't use the directional arrow keys to move in a game. So that's a nice, a nice change of pace for once, but it's not going to give you any extra chairs. So two chairs for controls. Yeah, that's two chairs for controls in total. And finally, fun. Then did you have fun? For real-time strategy game, boys and girls, this is a bit on the slow side. Then again, for real-time strategy, it plays a fuckload lot like a tactical squad game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of got that feeling there, Brad. Um, I did enjoy my first three hours that I put into this, but, you know, it's already becoming just a little bit, that special bit uh, known as repetitive. Granted, the prospect of uh, you new... And upgraded murder units and murder weapons will probably keep me coming back because, hey, it's Warhammer, it's on Linux, you're getting a pass for that. But, I guess at the end of the day, uh, all the complaints are valid. Uh, this first one is more, you know, squad-based management than real-time strategy. It's a bit slow-paced, there's not things like base building, that's not in this game. And, you know, you start the game, I play it, I just cheat like a bastard, grenade all the things, you get to the boss, you don't know it's a boss until you're like, hey, why isn't this one guy dying? Oh, right, he's got a mana bar, which he really doesn't, but it's a big health bar, and he absorbs all the bullets. If you're into the story, this one probably doesn't have the best Warhammer mythology story behind it, and that's what a lot of people are saying. I know what the hell a Warhammer is, that's all I can say about it, but if you know what the hell a Warhammer is, and you're a huge fan of it. Again, this thing's 19.99 wet, stinky American caches. You probably already bought it. But if you don't know what the hell a Warhammer is, and you're looking for, you know, a real-time strategy game, this one's got its flaws. So you might want to proceed with caution. But, you know, you're helping out Feral, and you're definitely helping out the cause of Linux gaming, if this is something that mildly appeals to you. So... Just keep that in mind. I like it. I'm going to continue playing. And I think, you know, for me, I, I, I want to say I'm going to give this two chairs with an Astro, Asteroid, Astrid. Because if I could play online multiplayer, and again, take a shot, unsupported operating system, because I'm running 1404. I think once I get that up and running, I'm going to have an even better time. And it will be a solid three chair game. But currently it's going to get the uh, two chairs and an Astro. I usually hate RTSs. I dread whenever we have to review one because I have to sit myself down and play it for a couple hours. Oh, no, I didn't hate this one. one. In fact, I sunk about six hours into it, and I'm probably going to go back. I just want to play it with some people. So, unfortunately, no one's bought this game yet. But after this review, go buy it. Um, yeah, I and a lot of a lot of the reason why I do like it is because there's less resource management, less resource management, and you unit micromanaging because you're just focused on your squad and having them do things. Or maybe it's because I love Warhammer 40,000. Actually, it's mostly that. 
Um, it, it is, it does away with a lot of the RTS elements that I really dislike and emphasizes going in and shooting the shit out of a bunch of Tyranids or Orcs, screaming blood for the blood god, Gorka Morka, red ones go faster, Warhammer meme, etc, etc. But I do have a gripe with this. Where are the Tau? Where are the Necrons? Those are the cool guys. The armies I'm actually interested in playing. Um... But online multiplayer works. It's fun. I was playing it with Empty a little bit. I haven't tried out Versus. I was gonna. I was joking about getting Che in for a Versus match, but he curb stomped my ass because he actually plays Warhammer. <laughs> um, I will give this a solid three chairs. I surprisingly, I enjoyed this game. I would highly recommend it. Oh yeah. Whenever we throw chairs at an RDS game, I always say it's not my cup of tea. But I usually give like those two exceptions, which are Warcraft Three and Gen Dungeons and Dragons Dragon Shard. Now, I may be actually using Dawn of War Two alongside those in future reviews. What I liked about Warcraft Three and Triple D were the quote-unquote RPG elements and the hero units. Although I guess I wasn't the only one because nowadays we have MOBAs popping up left and right, which are literally just hero units and um, RPG elements. Now, I hate MOBAs because in their attempt to become something that they're very obviously not, they lost all their charm. Dawn of War 2 doesn't really have a lot of charm going for it because you're playing as the goddamn Space Marines in the main campaign. It's the single most unimagin unimaginative ver uh, faction in this setting. Still, the uh, faction choice aside, and you can actually play as five other factions in the Retribution Expandalone thingy, this is definitely a, an rts i genuinely enjoyed it doesn't get the perfect score here simply because you're not in control you're giving suggestions but it's a very very solid three chairs yeah and unfortunately that totals out to two chairs for fun thanks a lot then and totals out to a two chair game for the final score final thoughts gentlemen um if you like warhammer buy it you're gonna dig it. I mean, we brought up Chi earlier. She was like, Poof, "Done," and we just lost him after Thursday when this launched. <laughs> I like it. Um, I've never really got into like squad-based managed games and stuff like that, but I was like, "Okay, I, I could dig this," and I'm gonna continue playing it because you know it wasn't just this. Uh, we got the expansion packs, all the Yolo and the swag, and even a little bit of a Dorito on the side. So there is a lot to do and a lot to play. We will be coming back to this with some of those expansions in a review because they have changed the game mechanics. Again, you know, I, I kind of wish there was a bit more like base building type elements and stuff like that. There's not, but still, I, I didn't hate it. Uh, I put three hours into it on accident by clicking play. So that's definitely a good sign. Yeah, definitely. And port-wise, Feral really needs more time with this particular engine before the performance is anywhere near something I can call good, because it's still dipping on a freaking Chitty X980. Come on, guys, you can do it. I know you can do it. I've seen you do it. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed, when it comes to the game itself, if you enjoyed Warcraft 3 and Triple D and the latest RTSs haven't really been scratching that itch, then Dawn of War 2 and the Retribution Expend Alone will totally do it for you. Yeah, I was honestly surprised that this is a real-time strategy game that I liked. I mean, I played StarCraft back in the day, I played Command & Conquer back in the day, never really got into it, and this is... Vin, Vin always has this bit of, I always go in to playing a game with the intent that this will change my mind about the genre. This one actually changed my mind about the genre. I enjoyed it. I would recommend this. Pick this game up. Yep. <laughs>